Okay, so in this little video, we're going to be talking about how to create databases and how to administer them. So the two tools that we want to use are these two here, one and two. They're under the databases heading. So this is our control panel. Um, it is available on freewebhost.co.nz, and if you've got a login, you will come to this page first. So if we look on the left-hand side, you'll see that I've got two databases already used, and I get 10 in total. Okay, so we're going to create another database and then we're going to populate that with some data. So I go to my SQL databases and I'm going to create a new databases and um, sorry, a new database and I'm going to call this uh, 12 TTM and create database. So the control panel goes away and does all the work for me and then you'll see here now I've got three databases in my list. I've got test, baseball, and 12 DTM, the one we just created. Um, okay, so I'm going to go home and to PHP my admin. Now, this is how we administer the databases, how we add data into it, how we delete data away from it, how we search and sort it, all of that kind of stuff, all the important aspects of my database administration. And I'm just going to connect to that database I created. Okay, so I'm inside this database. We can see here I'm actually in this database, the 12DTM one. It's wanting me to create a table because uh, there are no tables found in the database. I'm not going to create a table manually. I'm actually going to import the data. So I'm going to click on imports. You need to make sure you're at the correct level. You're in the uh, the DT in your database that you want to import this information into. If you're further in and you're actually inside a table, um, it will come out. You will come into some problems. Um, and so, if you're missing a few of the choices that I have here, that may be the reason. Okay, so I'm going to go bra browsing for the file that I'm using. So I click on Choose File, uh, and the file that I'm going to use is on the Student Share under Digital Technology. 12 DTM and 2014, and I am going to use the baseball rankings one for this one. It's a little bit more complex than the other one, and we might want to uh, have take advantage of that complexity to show a few bits and bobs. Okay, so the two things that I want to check, do not abort on insert error. So if it comes up against an insert error, it's not going to abort. And also, I want to click on the the first line of the file contains the table column names and that's true for this file and I should just be able to click go you won't need to change the format it will automatically uh, it will automatically say oh, okay this file is a CSV file so I'll change that format automatically you don't need to worry about it okay <clears throat> import has successfully been finished so I should just be able to go back to my database and then I'll see there is table one if I click on table one there is all the information that I just brought in okay so one thing before we move on before we finish with this importing kind of session we want to change the field types now you should know what that's about um, but you're going to know if you if you don't know uh, in just a second. So what I'm going to do is, you can see here I've got year ID, I've got IG ID, team ID, franchise ID, division ID, rank, win, loss, name, park, etc. So those hold, those types, I'm sorry, those fields hold information. So this one's just all text, this one's a number, this one's a text as well. Um, this one's a year so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to structure and I'm going to just check the type or the field type that's been assigned to those so you can see year ID got an integer um, IG ID got a varchar type varchar type varchar varchar integer 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 so that's actually done a reasonably good job um, what I might do is change these varchars which stands for, I believe, variable characters. So it can have not just text, but also punctuation marks and maybe numbers as well. So lots of varying character types. Um, I'm going to change those to text because most of these, um, excluding maybe the team IDs or the franchise IDs, 
will only con contain text. Okay, so I'm going to change those. So for instance, this, where are we? The name, I'm going to, or say the park name, I'll change the park name. I'm pretty sure that the park name is not going to contain too many numbers or anything like that. I'm going to change that from type bar chart to type text. Okay, and I'm going to click save. Uh, year ID, it's approximated that to an integer. An integer is just a, um, a whole number, so a number that doesn't have a decimal um, place or a decimal associated with it. So 1, 2, 3, 4 as opposed to 1.5 or 2.5 or anything like that. But more appropriate, we could possibly go for a date. Okay, now that is a maybe. We're just going to have a look and see what that does to our, um, our data. Okay, and let's go back to the table and check it out. Okay, you see here it's changed it from it's changed it from the year to this year here. So I'm probably going to want to undo that, um, and I think I'm probably actually going to have to re-import that information. So that was a bit of a fail test, but you can see what we're trying to achieve here. We're trying to make sure that these fields have the appropriate field type um, and the reason that we want to do that is because when people input this text or make additions we want them to have few options yeah if this is uh, the win rate is set to text they can insert anything they want they could insert wins equals 90 and that would accept it um, but if it's limited to a number value an integer they can only insert numbers and it means that people making mistakes becomes less of a problem. Okay. Okay, so I've just gone and changed uh, those bar charts, etc. As I said I would. I've left, na left name as a bar chart because there's a chance that some of those team names might include um, numbers. For example, there are team names that um, include numbers like the 76s, etc. So I've left that as a variable character or varchar um, type. Now what we're going to look at is searching. So I'm going to click on search uh, and we're going to generate our queries from this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dock this in here. Now these are the database queries that I would like to get. So I'd like to know all of the teams that played in 2010, the teams with a win rate above 90 and teams with new in their name so those are the queries that I'm looking for so that's how I'm going to do it I'm also just going to have a look this is the uh, database or the information um, so we're looking for all of the uh, teams first of all that played in 2010 okay so played in 2010 so year ID now this is an integer so it's got an equals so I can do equals greater than, greater than, or equals to because it's a number. If that was a text, as it um, quite often uh, equates to, sometimes it gets left as text uh, type. Um, we wouldn't be able to do this operation. So greater uh, is equal, sorry, equal to 2010. I hit enter, and it's returned all of the team or all of the records for those teams that played in 2010. Yep. So you can see there. So the record for those teams. Now the stuff that's up here, this little code stuff, that is SQL code, SQL code. Now that is the query code that we want to copy. That's the query code that you could write, um, but we can use uh, PHP my admin in order to generate that for us. So I'm just going to switch back to here and I'm going to paste that in. So that's the code that I'm looking for. That is the query uh, to find out the teams that played in 2010. Okay, so teams with a win rate above 90. So we're going to go to search. And so we're looking for win rates. So win rate, again, is an integer. Uh, we're not going equals. We're going greater than 90. So there's the greater than symbol. Greater than 90. Hit enter. Um, and we're going to so see here that we've returned all of the win rates 
above 90. None of those are below 90. Some over 100, in fact. So anything above 90. And there's the code as well. So I'm just going to copy and paste that in. And tidy that up a little bit. Okay, so there's the code that I'm going to use when I create my PHP file uh, and I'm looking to query the database. So slightly different code. These are two number, uh, sorry, these are two number based queries and we're going to do a text based query in this one. So back to our search and we're looking for names. So names are varchars. I'm going to go for the like option. So it's like new. Okay. And hit enter. Okay. What it's actually done is it's returned a zero rows result. So that is completely empty. So what we're going to do is we're just going to try that again. So I'm going to go to the search bar, back to the search, and I'm going to the name. And what I should have done is I should have used the like with these two percentage signs. And those percentage signs, if you look up here, it's a wildcard operator. So what I can do if I include that, it means that that new can come, anything can come before it. That's what that percentage sign means and anything can come after it. That's what that percentage sign means. So it can appear anywhere in the name. So if I hit enter on that one, we'll see that it's brought up the New York Yankees and the New York Mets. So it's able to find uh, that new anywhere in the name, anywhere in the team name. Okay, so we're now just gonna copy that text, that query text into our list. Tidy that up. Okay, so now we have the code for our three queries, all done and dusted. And it all came from this PHP my admin, all very simply generated uh, using the search function at the top. Uh, we also saw in a previous video the uh, changing of the field types. Yep, so these are fields, the year ID is a type of field, uh, we changed that or that's set to int. Uh, I changed these team IDs from varchar to text. And the major reason I did that was to save memory. Um, a text uh, field is much less um, memory to store than a varchar field, but also to avoid problems when people input that information. So that's why I changed things to integers if it's appropriate, um, or text if it's appropriate. It just limits the mistakes that people can make. So that is that.